Shalom, everyone. Shalom. I want to welcome everyone to the house of the Lost Sheep of Israel. My older Michael Johnson, the pastor over here with the Lost Sheep of Israel with the King James Bible University. And before we actually get uh, started up today, I do want to make some couple of announcements. We have some things that's uh, been brewing and going around. And we want to make sure we correct on all things. We want to make sure these things always goes out correct. There were some things uh, this past week that was not taught according to scripture and still I need to make sure even the things in the community section is taken down because it's not correct because we do independent studies on ourselves and we don't do it as a we we do independent studies based on how we was trained so these videos that was taught that was incorrect based on that channel had to be removed I'm very upfront about what I do I'm very upfront about what goes on here at the Law Sheep of Israel, as well as King James Bible University. We're not here to play games because I had a lot of, <clears throat> excuse me, older people that I've spoken to this past week and some called me, emails and different things, highly upset based on what was taught there. And I understand it because what we got to remember is this. And this is where we're going to make sure, and I'm, do you hear any coming from Elder Johnson himself? 
when something comes from here and it's based on a catchphrase, on a word, these are the same things that people do when you go into a Christian church. They'll do stuff based on a, on a verse, the way they'll build up to it, or they'll do it on a catchphrase of a word. And as I'm telling you right now, that will never happen again, not from King James Bible University. Because if it do, that'll be their last day here. I'm not here to play games with anyone because our lives, our souls is on, is on the line. And we cannot sit there and play these things to where we can do these type of teachings. So with that, again, from myself, something that should not have went out. So we're going to make sure these are going to go straight forward all the time. And then the same thing is we will be going right through here. Later, we're going to be going through Zoom. We're going to be back there for, for a minute. And we have another teaching that will be this afternoon at 3 o'clock Pacific time, 5 o'clock uh, Central, and 6 o'clock Eastern time. And this is one that we... We pulled it for a minute based on some things that was happening, but it has to still go forward. And it's, if you tell anyone, this is about child molestation and about a few other things that's very serious. And this will be taught today. And this is going to be very up close and personal to a lot of people. So we ask that you, if you're looking to really learn something about this here, about molestation, about the mindset of people who do these things, this is the one for you. So you make sure that you can catch that today and it'll be over here. It won't be at King James Bible University, it'll be over here. And it'll be today at three o'clock Pacific time, five o'clock Central and six o'clock Eastern time. We also gotta remember that we will be going to San Antonio. We will be having a baptism there and we also do blockchain there. So we will be building the blockchain, but also based on even what happened this past week, it shows that people, even where people sit there and checking for precepts, it, it really shocked me because people who say they know precepts and really still don't because they still get it mixed up on language. So I will be building the class for a language foundation class. And my thing is, if you're coming over for this language class, you need to make sure you're coming over to learn what's going on. Not coming over with this pre-notion that you know language. Because you come over with the pre-notion language, we go, it's not going to turn out in a good way. Because the main thing is, we are here to learn doctrine and the principles of what God has taught us. And that's why we got to keep moving forward on what we're doing. I have another uh, teaching. I got to go and put it up right now as I'm, as I'm speaking because we have another teaching actually gonna be next week. And I want people to be aware of that teaching. And um, it should have been right here. And let me check one more thing. Cause it's, there we go, it's right there. And I don't know why it didn't show there. Cause we had it there, let me, um, let me, I'm gonna, have to re, I'm gonna have to resize it. I'm resizing as I'm doing it, so. So just give me one second. And now, we will be doing this teaching next week, which is um, Shiloh. And this is the principles, doctrine, and language shall you be saved. Very important teaching. It gonna have a lot of information in there to help you move through and find out exactly what's going on. Cause this is a message to all God's people. This here is something that we have to hold through because right now we going through exactly what was happening from the beginning, which he had this to the seven churches. We got to understand what's happening now because this here, you have to remember very closely and you heard time and time and time again, where each and every preacher, you have the deacons, you have the evangelists will speak on this same thing. Watch who you learn from. And I'm going to tell you who pounds that I'm on almost every week. And that's, that's Elder Lynn. Watch who you learn from because your life is on the line. Your eternal life is on the line. And if you wanted to let it go behind, listen to just junk out there, that's on you. But you watch who you learn from. 
And if you don't watch who you learn from, I promise you, when you stand before God and when you're getting ready to go into the lake of fire, you know why. You know exactly why. And just because you're doing this here, you're thinking that somebody going, oh, we can do something a little bit different. This is what brings us to where our final destination, why a lot of people had a lot of different things happening and everything's going on and, and it's like a war. But we're looking at something right here. The loose editions, the, 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 the loose editions. And we want to understand something with these, with these, with this place here, because it's called Los Edisha. That's what it's actually called. That's a city. But the people there is known as the Los Edisians. But I'm going to tell you what this means up front. Los Edisians mean rule by the people, or you can also use rule by the citizens. That's what that actually means. And we're going to find out why to be more precise about this. Because what we want to understand is a couple of things. And this is what angered me about a lot of different things. One, I don't want I'd like to make sure we don't push out no false things here. Nothing. And don't get mixed up. And then you don't know what's going on. Because this place here was set up by Antiochus. This is why it's telling you the rule of the people. It was set up by him. His reign as king and his, he established this. He established this city called Los Edicius. That's what he did. And it was named actually after his wife. So that should tell you a little bit of something about something spiritually. He named it after, after a spirit. But the number of the followers of Christ, they, a lot of people settled there. And Los Edisha. After fleeing from Babylon and doing these different things. So what they did, they fled, they fled from Persia. And it was to help to restore peace in the order which the people have been disinfected there. That's why it was so upsetting when you see people do certain things. So when we look at this, you have one of the seven Asian churches in Revelation. And he's writing to the church of Edisha, and he's talking to the people, the followers of Christ of that city who was there and they was being rebuked in this letter. They was being rebuked of that for embracing the luxuries in the cities of the elite, participating in these cultures and then all this materialism, which all they were doing was perverting stuff. Perverting a lifestyle is crazy. They began to think they didn't need no outside help. They began to treat and, and come up with their own theologies and their own spiritual ways. They became wretched. They became just this impoverished, blind, naked people. Best to describe them. But when it becomes to this a city, this economy, they cannot do no wrong in their eyes because they are the citizens there. Exactly what the point is. That's exactly what the point is. Ruled by the people. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is being ruled by them. Was ever right in their own eyes. So this is why it was thriving. But we need to know the truth spiritually. And they couldn't find it because there was a lack of awareness. Mainly behind, they were just being lukewarm. Exactly what you're going to be seeing later. So this letter was sent to the inhabitants of the people of Lucidius, and it became more of a proverb reflecting the city level of ed education. So it's the same as you have water. You can use the water as an analogy. We're going to use that for analogy. So the same thing with the water. In the words of the creator, so they was neither hot and they was neither cold, but they were not hot or cold, but with regard to the body of Christ, he was warning them that had very little impact on this. That's what's the issue. That's what's the issue. Because these people are living under rules, under Lucidation, ruled by the people, ruled by the citizens. So it starts here. We're going to look at something. We're going to start beaming in on what, 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 what this talking about. So we're going to go over here. We're going to look at uh, Isaiah. We're going to start there first because we want to get some background, some, 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 some foundational work. 
So we're going to look at uh, Isaiah chapter 29, but we're going to look at verse 7. We're going to start right there, right there we want to look at. And he said, For the multitude of all the nations that fought against Ariel, even all that fight against her and her and it says it's mountains. It's always a little bit of weird where it's mountains, but it says, including the distress, her shall be as a dream of a night vision. But what is this saying? We got to know what this is talking about. We got to know exactly what is going on here and see exactly how this all works out. Because this multitude is talking about the nations, but Yerio, I want you to write it down, make sure we understand, because we want to understand this as we move forward so we know what he's saying spiritually. And Ariel is talking about the ruler of the winds, meaning Jehovah's lion. So we got to keep that in mind. Ruler of the winds, Jehovah's lion. That's what we got to remember. Keep this in mind. And we got to make sure we understand what this is saying. And what it's doing is it's going to continually fight. And what it's doing is that they have continued to fight against the spirit of Ariel. This is what they're doing. They're fighting against the spirit of Ariel. Meaning then this money, this, 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 this money is, this is a hard word for me to pronounce. But basically this, um, this motition, we just do it that way. Cause I, cause I already said, I'm keep, I keep, this word is a little bit tongue twister for me, but it, but it means a defense is fortification. It's fortification, which is a defense, which is of her wisdom, which was a defense against her. That's what they was doing. So as this Jehovah's lion is coming in and this motician coming and it's trying to come against them, it's the defense of that. And we're going to see how this actually works. We're going to see this in Ecclesiastes. We're going to see this over here. We're going to find out a few things here. In, in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 12, it says this. Because this is the defense against her. And it says, for wisdom is a defense, including money is a defense. But all excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Exactly what the point is. That's exactly what the point is. And they, and they fight against this. Because they don't want it. When you also look at Psalms chapter, chapter, I mean, Proverbs chapter uh, seven, four, verse seven, you're going to see the same thing. The same identical thing is going to speak about. It says wisdom is the principal thing. Same thing like I've been saying all the time, which we've been learning on. And wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, for that reason, get wisdom. And with all thy, and, and, and with all thy getting, get understanding. That's our key. We got to get the understanding also. Because if we don't, we fighting against ourselves. We fighting against our own salvation. We fighting against what we need to do to, to, to go into the kingdom. It makes no sense. It, it's crazy. But I want to show you something and why they fought against it and what's happening. When we look over here at Psalms 83, but we're going to look at something in three and four. We're going to look at Psalms 83, but we're going to look at verse 3 and verse 4. The reason why it says, They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, let us cut them off from being a nation. So they want to stop this. They want to break this up. They don't want this to be no more in together. So what they did is that the name, that the way of, the way of, the way of Israel may be no more in remembrance. That's why they was fighting against it. That's why they was fighting against this. This mortician, that's why they was going against it. And it was a defense and, and, she, and they got to fight. This is what we have to do. So we have to look at this and understand how this was working because they're taking crafty counsel against this and they want to go against the ways of Israel. That's the key. Keep this in mind as we move forward because now we're going to start getting into where it had to be in why it says Ariel, which is the ruler of the, the ruler of wind of the winds, but it's Jehovah's lion. You got to keep these in mind. Keep them in mind. Let's look at something. Let's look at something and find out and get some background information. Let's, but let's look at this all together. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 49. We'll find this here. 49. We're going to look at verse eight. 49 and verse eight. And we'll see this here. 
And we're going to see something. It says, Judah, thou art he. And it says, says, Judah, thou art in perfection and beauty. He whom thy brethren shall praise. I want to show you what's going on here. And it says, thy hand shall be in the neck of thy enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. We need to see what this is, understand it to where we can move forward. Understand what he's saying. He's saying, so thou art in the perfection and the beauty in whom the brother shall praise. And he says, thy hand, his power shall be upon the neck, upon the path of thy enemies. And thy father's children shall bow. They're going to bow as if he's a prophet, which is a similitude of the lion who going to be in the presence of us. That's what this is all saying. This is what this is saying. So now we understand it more with Judah it, it is Jehovah's lion. And their perfection and their beauty is what it's doing. And our brothers, we are going to be praised. We're going to give praise to him because he is the strength and he is in the path of our enemies and he is plowing down and we are to bow actually down to him as he's the prophet. He's going to be presented and he should be respected for the words that's coming from his mouth is what's happening. It's the same thing. You can see the same identical example which you'll see as we read more on this, you'll see what he gets into. Watch what happens. We're going to look at verse nine, and then we're going to go somewhere. And you're going to see something because I want to show you a couple of things. It says Judah is a lion's whip. We're going to find out what exactly why he's saying that. We're going to find out exactly why he's saying actually that because he's a lion's whip, meaning he's a lion's cub. He's a young one. He's a young one, but we're going to find out more about this. We're going to get more into it. So he's a lion's whip. And he says, from the pay, my son, thou go, thou art in perfection. Be going up. He stooped down. He crouched comparing a lion, but comparing an old lion. You see how he said, you know, who shall rouse him up? Who's going to rouse him up? We got to, we got to get this work worked out because he's going to say some things. We're going to come back up. We're going to look at it. So he's going to say a couple of things. Then we're going to go back up. It says the scepter. You see how he said the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor clarify. He's going to clarify. It's not going to depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his desires until Shiloh comes into who right it is. This is what we're going to get into next week, but it's to who right it is. Come. And it says, and unto him shall he gather the, gather the gathering of the people be. Now, the reason why I want you to see this, because I want you to key in on, nor a lawgiver, not just Judah, nor a lawgiver. Let me show you, let me show you why, 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 why I want you to keep this in there to where we can bring something back to our members. People who study their Bibles, you're going to see it because you, you didn't read it. We're going to see something that, that Joseph did. And you see this in uh, Genesis chapter 37. We're going to look at verse 7. We're going to look at that. And we'll see it here. And it says, For remember, we were binding sheaves in the field. And lo, my sheave arose. So Joseph saying his sheaves stood up. And he says, And as and also stood upright. And remember your sheaves. So he's telling his brother, Remember your guy's sheaves. Was rounding about and made obstinance unto my sheaves. <laughs> now he's saying obstinate, but he's telling they made reverence to the words of this 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 one prophet. That's what he's saying. So that's why when you get back over here to verse nine, back over here in Genesis, it says Judah is a lion's whip. From the prey, my son, nor thy going up and stoop down as he is crossed as a lion, but as an old lion who shall rouse him up. And then this scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver. So we got to keep these things in mind and the best thing to help us to show you this, this lion's whip. We got to understand this young lion. What is this young lion? How do that look? How do it fit? How can we find out what's going on? So the best one we're going to see here is, is I'm going to show it to you. We're going to look at this story here to see how this goes. We want to see how this all goes. We're going to, we're going to find this in first Samuel, first Samuel chapter 17. 17, we're going to go right here to verse 1. And we got to look at this. We got to start going down and we got to work it out. Because David 
is that lion's whip. He is the lion's whip. The elders are their perfection and beauty. And when he has stooped down and the crouch and was comparing as a lion, but an old lion. And who's going to rouse him up? David. David. He's the lion's whip. He's the young one. That's him. And you're going to see this through this story here. You're going to see what's going on here. So we're going to look at this verse one. It says, now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at, at Sukkoth, which belongeth to Judah. So they are Sukkoth, but it don't belong to them. It belongs to Judah. And they are pitched between Sukkoth and, and Eskiah and, and, and the Ephes did them. But we got to figure out what's going on because we got to remember a couple of things. I want to make sure we write them down so we'll know it. As we go through the scriptures, we'll know what they're talking about and we'll find out how they was moving. We're going to see how these words move, not what the words doing or what the words are, how the words move, how they functions, how they move around. So Philistines is wanderers. That's all Philistines mean. Wanderers. So now the wanderers gather together in their armies. That's what that actually is saying. That's what that is. in Sukkoth is the hedge of thorns. Now we know what that means. Now they gather together at the head of the thorns. And Judah, who's going to be praised now, now we see what's going on. So now we're getting a little bit more of what's going on. Actually, let me pull this other part in here. I want to show you something. <clears throat> so we can see a little bit more help. In Psalms chapter 118. Psalms 118 and we're going to look at verse 22. 22. And it says, it says, the stone which the builder refused is become the head stone of the corner. Exactly what happened because you can even see when Yahweh shy, he became the head of the corner, but it came by there through David. It came through there by David. So we got to keep that in mind. That's how he became it. So now the Philistines was the thorns in the side of Israel. The Philistines was the thorns in the side of Israel. We can also see this when we look at numbers. Because now we're going to see why all this is working out and why these Philistines is a problem. And we're going to see this in Numbers chapter 33. We're going to look at this in verse 55. We're going to see this and then we're going to put everything together. We're going to start making this, making this meal to where we can get it. We're going to look at this in 355. 355 we want. And it's here. <clears throat> and you hear this from the mouth of Moses coming from coming coming from Jehovah. You see it here. It says, However, if ye will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall come to pass that those which ye let remain of them shall be pricks in your eyes. So be pricks in your understanding, including thorns in your side. Exactly what they did. And shall vex you in the land wherein ye dwell. Exactly what the Philistines are doing. So this is the thing that he said. He, he told us this. We, we knew this way ahead of time. We in 1 Samuel, he telling us this back in Numbers. Back in numbers, we've been told this, but we, <laughs> I'm telling you, we be, we be, we be, we cause our own problem. We good at cause our own problem. Then we, then we look to put it on somebody. So it tells us this here in, in Judges chapter two, verse three, it says, wherefore I also said, I will not drive them out from before you. He's not going to do it. He's going to make us do it, but they shall be as thorns in your sight and their God shall be as snares unto you. Exactly what the issue is. We want everybody to do everything for us. We have, we want everybody to do everything for it. We don't want to do nothing for ourselves. We want everybody. To, and then when we don't do something and then something goes wrong, the first thing we want to do is put the blame on somebody. We good at doing this. So the same thing you see here. So we see this going on, but then as Kaya, we want to know what's going on. So he's the hedge around, but we got to remember the Philistines is the wonders. 
and Sukkot is the head of a uh, head is the hedge of thorns. So we want to keep all these in mind. And then we got if he's the dam is is making out a boundary of blood. So this is so we got we got to make a choice. It's a choice we have to make. But let's look at this. Let's look at this and we're going to see something. And now we're going to say, and it says, including Saul and the men of Israel were gathered, gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah. They right by Elah. What is it? Valley of God, the mighty tree. We gathered together by the mighty tree, the valley of God. That's us. And, it, and then and to set battle in array against the Philistines. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. The only reason I say okay, because I was just talking a little bit too soon, but yeah, okay. So we set for battle. We over here in Eli by the valley of the gods with the mighty tree. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's read on. You're going to see why I'm, why I'm saying that. And I don't, it said, now the Philistines stood on the mountain on one side and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side. And there was a valley between them. Exactly what's supposed to happen. Exactly what's supposed to happen. Because I'm going to tell you why it's supposed to happen. Because it tells you this when we look at Deuteronomy. I want to make sure we, we, we make sure we, 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 we making our own faults. We doing our own faults. Then this is our own fault. And we're going to see this in, in Deuteronomy chapter 11. We're going to pick it up at verse 26. And you're going to see this is our own fault. Not, nothing to do with God. It's our own fault. In, in uh, 11, 26, it's still telling you this. And from the mouth of Moses again, he's going to tell it to us again. He says, remember, I set before you in the presence of you this day, blessings and cursing. And a curse. Exactly what, what he said he was going to do. Exactly what he said he's going to do. But watch this. I wanted to show you something. He says, a blessing if you obey the commandments, the instructions of the Spirit of God, your, your God, in which I command you this day. You, you pay attention to what's going on and you do it. And you're going to be blessed. Verse 29. And a curse if you will not obey the commandments, the instructions of, of the, Spirit of, the Spirit of your God, but turn aside out of the way in which I command thee this day, to go after other gods, which ye have not known. You see, he's making it really clear for us. He's making it clear for us. But but remember they split up. See right over here, we were on one side, they on the other side. So he says, and it came to pass when the spirit of thy God have brought thee in unto the land, whether thou goest to possess it, that thou shalt put the blessings upon Mount Gerizim. Remember that? In the curse upon Mount Ebal. And you can't tell what side you're on over here. <laughs> you don't know what side you're on over here. See, because you're going to find out later, they were scared of this guy. They were scared of this guy. It is what it is. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. We'll go back over here. Because they're scared of him. It says... And there went out a champion and, and out of the camp of the Philistines, of these wanderers, named Goliath. So he going to come out. Goliath going to come out. Goliath means Susa, a wine press of prophecy. <clears throat> he like to curse you. <laughs> he cursing your foreknowledge. Y'all saying, y'all saying, y'all the army of God, y'all ain't nothing but a little bunch of little bit, bunch of little wimps. That's Goliath. And then he's from Gath. So it's Goliath of Gath, which is the wine press. So it makes sense. Everything makes sense for him. And what we're looking at, one side is on Gerizim, is the division of cutting off. The other one is on the cursed side, which is Ebal, which is bear. But you can't tell who's on which side. Because I'm going to show it to you. you. We can't tell who's on which side. Let's, let's, let's keep going down a little bit more. And you're going to see, we don't know who's on what side. And let's look at this here. It says, and he had, and he, and he had a helmet of brass and upon his head and his, and he was armed with a coat of mail and a weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. Interesting. 
but it gets better. Oh, it gets way better. It gets way better than this because it's going to go down a little bit more. We got to see what's, what more he's talking about. 17.6. And he had graves and brass upon his legs and targeted brass between him. You see how he's describing this guy? He, this, this, this guy, he's, he's, he's carrying all kinds of weight. Big guy, because we're going to see what's going on. Oh, shoot. I got to clear this. I don't know why I'd like to do that. And I need to find me another highlight. It was I need to do. Um, so verse 7, he's saying this. He says, In the shaft of his, his spear <clears throat> was like a weaving beam, and his spearhead weighed 600 shekels of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him. So... <laughs> I'm telling you, this 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 guy, he's a, he's a trip. I'm talking about Goliath, because you're going to see he's going to do something. So he stood and he cried unto the armies of Israel. So he cried unto us. You might well move Israel, put us. He cried unto us. And he said unto them, he said unto us, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? So he's talking about to set. So he's telling you, talking about why have you came out to set, to establish and confirm your battle, your fight, your war in a rape. Meaning, we didn't came in shiny armor. We didn't came in this armor, <laughs> but we ain't doing nothing. Makes all the sense in the world what he's saying. Because watch what he, he going to say. He says, I, I am, I'm not a Philistine, and ye a servant of Saul? Am I not a Philistine? Y'all, y'all, the, the service of Saul, choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. Let somebody come down to me. All this makes sense. We at war. Every bit of this makes sense. But guess what? It gets better. It gets better because he can sit there and he's doing this. In my, he's talking to our army. He's talking to us. He says, if you be able to fight with me, if, <laughs> if you be able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, ye should be our servants and serve us. One, they on our land. They then went into our house and took our house. <laughs> I'm telling you, we'll talk all kind of, we'll talk all kind of trash, but now this big dude that showed up in the first thing we doing, okay, okay, who who going who going to fight this guy? And this guy talking trash. But he, but he, but guess what? He gets better. And the Philistine said, "I defy the armies of Israel this day." I defy you guys. Me, you know what he's saying? I dare you. That's all defy me. I dare you. I dare you. One of y'all come out here. I dare you. <laughs> Give me a man that we may fight together. Put one, I dare you to put one out here. I dare you. <laughs> this one man talking trash to the whole army. In the first thing we want to do, look at this. We, 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 Hercules, Hercules. We, we, we all this. One man shows up bigger than everybody and he's daring you to come out there. He's dare you to come out there. He took your money and t- telling you to shut up. And then, could you see, it says, when Saul and all, when Saul and all, Saul and all, let's remove Saul, he's the king. We're just going to say all Israel, all Israel heard these words, heard those words of the Philistine, of this wanderer. They were dismayed and greatly afraid. Wimps. (laughs) <laughs> Jane wimps. 
wimps. See, what we gotta remember is this. I want you to, I want you to see something. I want you to see something. Because I want you to understand exactly what's going on with God. Because God, one thing he didn't do, God didn't give you the spirit of fear. He didn't do that. He didn't do that. And you're going to see this in um, 2 Timothy. You need to see this in 2 Timothy. Just, just to prove the point. 2 Timothy chapter 1. We're going to look at verse 7. So, so again, <clears throat> it says, For God have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. He didn't give us that. So where did that come from? They were greatly afraid, but he didn't get a, he didn't get a spirit of fear. Who's going to rouse up that lion? These are a bunch of lions out there. Everybody, that's right. Everybody's a bunch of lions. One guy shows up. So you need to see something. Verse twelve. Now David was the son that of the Ephraimite of Bethlehem Judah whose name was Jesse and, and he had eight sons and, and the man went among men an old man in the days of Saul so the Ephraimite is just telling you about a fruitful native that's all that's saying and then Bethlehem Judah is the house of bread to be praised that's what that's talking about Jesse is the gift so he's a gift that's all this is saying so we can we can Cut all the cut all the side. That's what this is saying. That's what this is talking about. But it gets better. See, it gets way better than this. Verse thirteen. Cause we want to. It says, "In in the three eldest sons of, of Jesse went and followed Saul." So keep this in mind. So three of 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 um of David brothers of Jesse, cause he, he the same daddy. So three of his brothers was in this army. I want you to keep, just jot that down. Three of David's brothers was in the army. Full, they full-blown lions. Full-blown lions. And, and, they, and they followed Saul to the battle. And their names were three sons went to battle was Elab, the firstborn, and the next was Aminadab, and, and then the third was, 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 was Shemaiah. It's telling you right there. <laughs> you got all these... These are the three. These are the three. But it get it gets better. It always gets better. Oh shoot, it did it again. I don't yeah, I'm gonna have to get me another thing. So so we see here what happened. I'm just gonna leave it like that because I'm tired of that thing doing that. So it says David was the youngest of the three eldest follow Saul. So David was the youngest brother. Keep this in mind as we go forward. So as we go down, oh, I forget to do that. It says, but David went to return from Saul to feed the, his, father's, his father's flock, his father's sheep at Bethlehem. So this is what David went back to do. He went back to do this, which is all cool. It's all cool, well and good. So as this is going on, as this is going on, we got to keep in mind what is happening the entire time. Because this guy, this guy, this guy is out there. This guy is out there. That's not going to change. This guy is there. So as David went back, he, he went back to feed, to, feed, to feed the sheep. That's what he went back to do. So we're going to pick it up a little bit more. And... Now, remember, David's the youngest. He got three brothers out there in the army. Keep this in mind. Three older brothers in the army, full-blown lion. David's a little, he's a little whip. He's, he's a young one. He goes back to feed the sheep. So now verse 16. So it says, And the Philistine drew near, near morning and evening and presented himself 40 days. So every day he went out and did this. Every day he went out to, to make sure we're wimps. Every day. I want you to keep that in. He did this for 40 days. 40 days taunted us for 40 days. Taking our lunch money. Every morning he took our lunch money. 
Verse 17, it says this. And Jesse said unto David, his son. So he told David, I want you to keep it. Make sure you note this. He told David to do something. So his dad told David, he says, take now for thy brethren an ephah in a perch in, in, in this perch coin in these 10 loaves and run to the camp to thy brother. So you see clear as day, Jesse told him to take this to his brothers. So we see that David didn't go there on his own. His daddy told him to go. Keep that in mind because this going to come back in the, this going to come back to your play. So let's go, let's go down a little bit more. Verse 18. And oh shoot, let me see. I gotta hit the end of that. And in 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 these uh in these care in and carry these ten cheese and and the captain of their thousand and he looked how his brother fair and and take their pledge. So so he's telling you. you then go then then go check on your brother and you can see how they been in this great courage and all this all this good stuff. He's telling David this. So, so now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah. See, see, telling you right there. In fighting with the Philistines. They, they wasn't fighting. <laughs> they, they wasn't fighting, but that's, that's fighting. They're they out there at the battle, but they're not doing nothing. So we're going to see what happens. So David gets on the scene. So now David rose up early in the morning and David left, left the sheep and uh, with the keeper and took and went as Jesse, his dad, had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the hosts were going forth to fight and shout for, for, for the battle. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a crack up. This, this is funny because you're going to see what's going to happen. You're going to see what's getting ready to go down. So now we see here in verse 21. It says now for Israel and the Philistines have put, put the battle in array. They didn't put the battle in array. Think about that. They got the battle in array. <laughs> you know, I guess nobody can. I told you what array is, just shiny armor. <laughs> So they, y'all catch it in a minute. Y'all catch it in a minute. So they just in a array. They just, they just, they just looking good. That's pretty much it. In a, a army against army. So they just seeing who got the best, who got the best, the best, the best armor. They ain't fighting. Well, y'all catch it in a minute. Y'all catch it in a minute. That's why I say this. This is actually funny. But they scared. But they scared of that guy. They scared of Goliath. They, they that Goliath. They don't mess with. <clears throat> So, so then it says, and David left the carriage and, and in the hand of the keeper and, and, and uh, with the army. And he came and saluted his brother. And as he did this, and he talked with, with them, remember there came up that champion, that came up with the champion. So now this champion comes up. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Now this guy comes up again. Why they showing off they 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 their money suits and their armor and all this stuff and and they thinking they they thinking they they got everything going okay hey I got this I got that why are they doing all this now this guy comes back up the Philistine Agath Goliath by name <laughs> he comes up out of the army of the Philistine and spake according to the same words he's telling them the same thing. I dare you to bring somebody up here. I dare you. I'm going to hook him. I, I, put, bring him up. I dare you. The same words. Now, ain't nobody fuck. Now they hide again. Because they're going to hide. <laughs> when he comes up, they hide. So, but got a problem. David heard them. David heard those words. This little, this little young, this little young whip, this little young guy, this young one, he heard it. And you see what happened, just like I said. You see what happened? All the men of Israel 
when they saw the man, fled from him and were so afraid. Soon as they see him, you scatter like roaches. <laughs> I told you. That's why it's so funny. When he shows up, we out there, we, hey, we, look what we got. Look what we got. Oh, boy, I come over. I hurt you. I, I, they talking trash. We talking trash. They talking trash. We talking trash. Goliath come up. We scatter. <laughs> they talk trash. We talk trash. They talk trash. We talk trash. They talk trash. We talk trash. Goliath show up. We scatter. Because we are so afraid. We scared of him. But David heard it. See, that's the thing is. So now we're going to see kind of what's going on. We're going to see what's going on. So you see here. Go to 25. So it says, in the minute, Israel said, have you seen this man? <laughs> that is come up. Did you see this dude? I'm saying, man, dude, did you see, man, did you see this dude? Surely to defy Israel. He dared Israel. Is he come up? He, he dares you to do this. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with the great riches and give him his daughter and make and, and, and make his father's house free from Israel, free in Israel. That's interesting. <laughs> Kill this one guy. Kill this one guy. Talking all this trash. And then when he shows up, everybody scatter just like roaches. Just like roaches. Light come on, you gone. And, and you sit here and we're looking at this and same thing gets right here. And David spake to the men. This little young, this, this young whip, <laughs> a lion's whip. David spake unto the men that, that stood by him, saying, what should be done to this, to this man that killeth this Philistine? So what, what should be done to this day? And, and, and take away the reapproach from Israel. You see how David talking? Okay, he said, "For who is this uncircumcised Philist? Who who is this fool that he should defy? He should dare the armies of the living God." You see, this now this coming from the mouth of a kid. In their eyes, he's a kid, and it's coming from his mouth. That gonna defy the the the, the army of God. So he, he goes on more. And, and the people answered him after this in manner and saying, who shall it be done to that man that killeth him? <laughs> now, remember his oldest brother. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but his, his oldest brother, you know. Now you gotta remember, he got the youngest, you got the oldest guy, you got the youngest. You got this baby, this kid. He comes out there. So he laughed. The oldest brother, he heard him. He he hear David. He heard David over there talking, talking his trash. When he spake unto those men. So he laughed, angered, was kindled against David. So he got mad at David. Cause he just as scared as, as Goliath as the rest of the men. But David talking to all this trash. Think about it. your little pretty brother who can't even be in the army. Talking church, talking trash. Like, man, you gonna get us killed. So he left, he's mad. He angered. Yeah, David. And he said, Why cometh down hither? Now who sent him down there? <laughs> who, who sent him down there? His dang daddy. His daddy sent him down there. Said, hey, take him, take him this stuff and and watch him. Watch how you watch how your valley and brother's gonna take care of Israel. And, and and give him this food and give him the bread and and you watch and you see how a man's supposed to be a man. <laughs> David down there, you watching this, you watching contrary. You seeing stuff contrary. Why you come down here? He says, and with whom thou hast left fruit sheep in the wilderness. Why you think the sheep is fruit? When y'all was watching them, everything was getting them. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's comical. But you don't even see what kind of what kind of person David is. So these are you fruit sheep. Why is few sheep? I'm the baby. We had a lot of sheep. When you were watching them, 
but what happened to the sheep? See, he, David could have easily said that. He had a lot of sheep before. I remember I was little, little. I couldn't even watch the sheep. We had a lot of sheep. But then the sheep started missing. So he gets the same thing like with this guy Goliath. So y'all must have scattered. When danger hit, y'all scattered. That's what happened. But let's look at this. <laughs> so he says, uh, few sheep in the wheel. I know thy pride and thy naughtiness, yeah, because he was ruddy, in, in thy heart, thou art in your perfection beauty. Come down, thou mighty see the battle. See, mind you, his daddy told him to go down there. See, that's what he's not looking at. His daddy told him to go down there. Let's go, let's go a little bit more. So David sitting there, <clears throat> David want to know. And David said, uh, what have I done now? What, 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 what? What, what, what have I now done? Now what I do? What I do? Every time I do something, it always does. Is, is there not a cause? <laughs> Y'all scared of this Philistine or on, on the other side of the mountain? Y'all scared of this dude? So he turns. So now he talk, he's talking trash to his brother. And this is the oldest brother. So, and he turned from towards another and spake after the same manner. And the people answered, again after his formal manner. So you see what's going down. We see what all was going down. And and same thing like I said, you actually I'm gonna show you this the way you see it. I want to show you this and we're gonna look at first Samuel. The reason why I want you to make sure you see he wanted to know why is he down there, but I just want you to see <clears throat> all together his daddy sent him so we don't so we don't get mixed up here. Cause that's why some people will sit there and see. See David told him. I mean, Jesse told him. We see that. And Jesse said unto David's son, take now for thy brother an ephah of this purged corn. So he's, t you see, he's telling David to do this. So David, they saying, David, why you come? But literally, his daddy told him to come down there. So now, as these words talk, and then now, so now these men hearing this, and, and then when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed before Saul. So they did this in the presence of Saul, and he sent for him. So Saul up there sitting there, okay, hey, go get this guy. I want to see who this guy is. They're not saying this is his kid, so, but he want to see who this guy is. So, Because he's going to most likely have him go out there and challenge. <clears throat> so what happens here, so David said to Saul, let, not, let, 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 let no man's heart fail because of, of him. That servant will go and fight and fight fight this Philistine. So he see this little bitty kid, he see this little kid talking about he gonna go and he gonna fight him. I go and I'll fight him. That's what he's saying. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna fight this guy. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'm gonna go take care of the guy. Don't even worry. I got you covered. I got you covered. So he said, I'll go fight this Philistine. Now we're gonna see something with, with Saul. So Saul, Saul said there, Saul said to David, he, he said, thou art in your own perfection and beauty. You're not able to go against this, this Philistine and, and fight with him. You can't, you can't, look at you. you. You can't go fight against this guy. For thou art in perfection, your little beauty, but a youth. You're just a little young guy. I get it. And he, a man of war, <clears throat> a man of war from his youth. This man been like this from his youth was like this. So David's sitting there like, oh, okay, you, you must don't know me. <laughs> David, okay, you don't know me. Let me let me let me share something with you. Let me share something with you. Let me share something with you, King. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant, keep his keep his father's sheep. My brothers can do it, I do it. He said, And there came a lion, including a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I'm on watch. Not my brothers, I'm on watch. And they, a lion and a bear, and, and they came and took a lamb out of the flock. And I'm on watch. Not them who keep, every time that guy show up, they run, they run like cockroaches. No, this is what this lion and this bear did. But I want to show you, I want to tell you something that happened. And my brothers can't even refute it because they know what happened. He says, and I went out after him. I went after him and smote him and delivered it out of the mouth, out of his mouth. And when he arose against me and he rose up against me, 
I caught him by his beard and I smote him and I slew him and I killed that joker. He ain't got time to play with that dude. That, that, wasn't, that wasn't his sheep. Gonna sit there and take a sheep. But not on my watch. It ain't my brother's. He said, and thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. <laughs> Including this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them. Seeing he has defiled the armies of the living God. Man, I can't believe he did. I'm going to do him the same way. Sitting there talking that trash. He said, I got something for him. So David sitting there. So David sitting there. He's he telling he, He's talking. So David said, moreover, the spirit of God have delivered me out of the paw of the lion, including the paw of the bear. He delivered me out of all of them. He would deliver me out of the hand of this, 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 this dang uncircumcised Philistine. He convinced, he convinced, he convinced him. So he, so he told David, so Saul told David, go, <laughs> you go, you go ahead and go. Dude, you ain't seen nobody like you go, go. And in and, and the spirit of God be with thee. So now we're going to see in verse, verse 38, he gets better. So verse 38, it gets down a little bit more. Now the army, now Saul armed David with his armor. Understand what he's saying? He armed David with his armor and put on a helmet and brass and, and on his head and, and he armed him with the coat of mail. Now, mind you, all this stuff going on, they sitting there looking pretty. They sitting there looking pretty, but they still ain't fought in it. They just looking good. But they haven't fought in none of this stuff. So David, 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 he girded it. He was cool with it. David was cool with this stuff for a second. So, so David girded his sword and put it upon his armor and, 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 and essayed to go forth. And, and he had not proved it. It's not proven. They just, they just, it's just show, it's just being show for it. Just say, hey, this is what we got on. This is what we got. I got on this Amani. That's all they got. So it's not proven. So David pulled, put them off. He took them off him. And he, and he told him. He told him he'd be straight up front. So he took his staff in his hand and he chose five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in his shepherd's bag, which he had even in his scrip. And, and his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. So he, he, he going to go there with his sling. Now you got this little bitty kid getting ready to walk up on this big old Goliath, this big wanderer. So now you see, and then the Philistine came and drew near unto David. And the man that bare the shield went before him. So now they, they not, they not, he not really seeing what's going on, but now he getting ready to see it. And now you go, now this Philistine getting ready to see him. So when they, when the Philistine looked about, he saw David. <laughs> he looked about. He sees a little bitty dude. He looked down and like, wait a minute. So he was sustained. It was it. So he disdained him. He was, he, he felt he was being despised. Y'all gonna send this little kid out. Wait a minute. All y'all sitting over here talking to each other, and y'all gonna send this little kid over here. So he, he it disdained him. He, yeah, that despised him. See, and then see, he was but a youth and, and ruddy. See, and people will tell you one side note, they'll tell you ruddy means he's white. That's the biggest bold faced, unadulterated, low down, dirty lie that you that's ever been we've been in this world. All that means is lively and conceited. That's all that's talking about in the in the in the, in, the, in these um he's honoring. That's all that is. But they'll sit there and try to claim something that is not even not even true. The stupidest thing in the world. But that just shows you how stupid people where they tell you they know Hebrew and they don't know nothing but 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 ignorance. Because that's all that means. So he was ready. He was lively, including of a fair countenance. So, so he, he, he was a fair countenance, meaning he, he was a nice looking guy. So they, that's what they knew. So but this this Philistine seen that. So the Philistine, but he's still mad. He ain't, he ain't changing the point. He's still upset. And and now he's gonna talk to David. So 
in the Philistines said unto David. So he's going to talk to David. He, there's something he don't know, but well, I'm going to talk to David. So he said, so he said, so, so, so the Philistines said unto David, he said, am I a dog? Am I a dog? That thou come to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by, by his gods. Remember, don't, don't be dealing with them gods. They're going to be a snare to you. They're going to be a snare to you. So this is, what, this is what's going on. So now the Philistine, he said David. <clears throat> he, now he still hooked David up because he's a warrior. So the Philistine said to David, come to me. And I will give thy flesh into the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. He said, come on over here. I just, I just kill you real cool, real calm. And I let them see you, you know, struggle for a little bit, but I put you out your misery and I let the fowls of the air and the beasts of the field eat you and everything will be cool. <laughs> so this is technically all he's saying, but he's going to do it in a cool way. He, yeah, I'll take you out. I'll take you out and it'll be quick, you know. So same thing, we get down to verse 45. So as he's, all this going on, then said David to the Philistine, thou coming to me with a sword? A little bit David, you, you know David got David got David got a conversation for you. He said, Thou coming to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name, in the way of the Spirit of God of hosts. See, this is how I come, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. See, see, that's David's hot. Don't think David ain't mad. David's mad. I said, man, you sitting there, you gonna you gonna come to me, talk trash about the God of Israel people? Oh no, dude, no, dude, you getting ready to pay for this, bro. You getting ready to pay for this. So he goes on more. He goes on a little bit more. He's gonna talk a little bit more now. He said, This day will the Spirit of God deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and take thy head from thee. I'm not gonna take your head from you. And I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day to the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth. And that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. <laughs> it's coming from this kid though. You gotta see, this coming from this young youth, this coming from this young one, out of his mouth, talking trash. So same thing I want you to see something. I want you, I want you to see, we're gonna keep something here. I want to show you why, why it's saying this even in Genesis. Genesis uh, 49, verse 8. 49, verse 8. That's why it says this. <clears throat> so this is why it says this. 49, 8, but we're going to go all the way down. We're going to grab this all the way down to 11. So, but the main thing is, it tells you, it says in verse 9, it says, Judah is a lion's whip. That's, that's, that's him. That's this guy. That's this guy who, who's hot. He's hot about this. But Goliath don't know that. Goliath sit there just says as a kid. But he's the lion's whip. He's that young one. From the prey, he says, from the prey, my son, thou art not going up and stoop down as a crouch, as a lion. That's them other ones. As an old lion, that's them. Who shall rouse him up? This little one. This little bitty young guy. That's why it says the scepter should not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver between his feet until Shiloh who right it is come. That's why I'm saying all this. But nobody really looking at David because David, he's that young guy. So it gets down where we're going to look at verse 47. So now, you know, but still, I get, I get Goliath where you got this little bitty kid and all you guys, everybody else running from him. So now, and then the assembly shall know that the, the spirit of God save if not with a sword. <clears throat> in a spear, but the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands. So he's saying, I'm, I'm going to do you in. I'm going to be the one going to do you in, but I'm doing it by the power of the Lord. So you getting ready, you getting ready to die, bro. You don't know it, but you getting ready to die. And you sitting there, I know the man looking at this little bitty kid and she's sitting there, that ain't true. So it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew Nigh to meet David, that David hasted. See, now he thinking he going to come to David and David going to run, but that didn't happen. So when he came, when he arose and came, drew nigh to David to meet, to, to, to meet David, David hasted and ran towards the army to meet the Philistines. So David started running towards them. 
And guess what? He's doing this by himself. <laughs> he's running towards him by himself. And I know, I know probably he's sitting there in his mind, this little, oh, I'm going to kill this little boy. I'm going to kill him dead. So watch what happens. So, and David put in his hand in his bag and took, took this a stone and, and slain it and smote the Philistine in his forehead that, that the stone sunk into his, into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. Yep, all problems going to start right now. And you see right here, verse 50. So we see right here, and David prevailed over the Philistine with the sling and the stone and smote the Philistine and slew him in there. But there was no sword in the hand of David. No, he, he gave him back to them. It wasn't proven. So, so he told them they can keep it. But it came out even better because David seen another way to do it. Verse 51. For that reason, David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out in the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head, as he said he was going to do therewith. And when the Philistine, when these wanderers saw their champion was dead, they kicked rocks. <laughs> they kicked some rocks. So as it says right there in verse 10, this scepter should not depart from, 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 from Judah, nor a lawgiver, until who right it is come. Now the same thing like I was showing you first with uh, Joseph, because most people always look at the, old, the, the oldest child. Well, it's the oldest child. It's the oldest. No, it's the one who's serving God, the one who comes to the knowledge of God first. So we're going to see this because Reuben was his firstborn, but you can see he wasn't the one who got the double portion. We're going to go up here to verse 40, chapter 48, verse 21. And you'll see who, get the, who, got, who got it. And you see what Israel did. And Israel said unto Joseph, Remember, I die, but God shall be with you and bring you again into the land of your fathers. And he tells him right here. Moreover, I have given to thee one portion above your brother, which I took out of the hands of the Amorites, with my sword and my bow. So he's telling you the same thing. It didn't go to it didn't go to Reuben. Just because Reuben, they say, well, Reuben, he was the firstborn. The double portion didn't go to him. It went to it went to Joseph. So people sit there <clears throat> and talk about certain things, and we got to see what's going on. But you got to remember. When you're sitting there, you're saying you're holding on to the word of God. You're saying you're holding on to the word of God. Some people is neither hot nor cold. That's why we was, That's why he's saying that and why he's holding on to it and why we need to see that to understand what was going on. People sitting there talking about they're the army of Israel, but as soon as that one big adversity comes before you, what do you do? You run and you hide. We can't help it because this is what we do. We're going to go back to Isaiah chapter 28, 29, but we're going to look at verse 9. We want to look at that, and then we're going to get into what we mainly need to may see. <clears throat> so as we sit there and we see this here, it says, stay yourselves and, and wander. It says, cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They are staggered, but not with strong drink. This is key. See, they're drunken, meaning you stumble, but not with, with, not with wine, not with faith and knowledge, and, and foreknowledge. You ain't, you ain't drunk with that. And you're staggering, not with strong drink, not with influence of pride. That's what he's telling you. Right, right, here, right, right in front of our faces, he's saying this to us. This should, be, this, should, this should tell you even more because we see people like to do a lot of eye service, a lot of different things. But it's saying this. It says, for the Spirit of God had poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep and have closed your understanding that the prophets and your rulers and the, the seers have, 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 uh, have he covered exactly what he's talking about and exactly what needs to be happening. Meaning, meaning this and meaning this to more so. We're going to look at something in the second Thessalonians. I want to show you something. Just, just show you what we, we can get into this. Second Thessalonians chapter two. And people don't think this will happen, but it happened every time because once he does this, he's not, as I tell people all the time, he is not playing with us. And it says, it says, for this cause, God should send them a strong delusion. Who? People of Israel. Why, you keep, why do people keep thinking it's talking about somebody else? 
He's talking about he gonna send you a strong delusion that you should believe a lie, that they might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. This strong delusion, this blindness, this falsehood, this errors, this deep sleep, this being slothful. He's going to close your understanding. In fact, in fact, let's look at something. I want to show you something. See, because people, well, no, that guy, okay, okay. See, this is why we're not here to play games about all this, 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 these other things. In, for, in uh, 1 Kings chapter 22, but we want to look at something in verse 23. And I want you to see exactly who this is coming from. In verse 23, it's telling you the same thing we're going to see what's coming, what happened in 2 Thessalonians. It says, now, for that reason, remember the Spirit of God had put a lying spirit, this strong delusion, this lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets, and the Spirit of God has spoken evil concerning thee. He's not playing with you. He's not playing with me. But people sit there and want to play. Oh, no, well, we can do this. We can do this. Keep thinking you can do that. That's why I say so many people have the right and, and, and rightfully so should go to the lake of fire. Rightfully so. Should bust it wide open. Why? Because you have this spirit on you that you can't get away from. Like to play these little dumb games. Let's, let's get some more here. Let's get some more here. It says, in the vision of all is become unto you, comparing the words of the book that is sealed. Because this understanding is sealed to many people that is here. And then the first thing you do, go try to run somewhere else and unseal it. It says, which a man delivered one that is learned saying, read this, I pray thee. And he said, I cannot, for it is sealed. It's sealed. <laughs> Let's go down there. Let's go. Okay. And the book was delivered unto him that is not learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he says, I am not learned, but I, 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 I'll break it down to you. And that's what you look for. That's what you look for. You like to run up under the ones who unlearn and not learn. And you say, oh, yeah, I'm cool with him and I'm a roll with him. And you should go to hell. You should go straight to hell. The book is 100% spiritual. Actually, let's, let's, let's go somewhere. Let's go somewhere. John chapter 4. John chapter 4. We want to look at verse 24. Show you, show you why. Show you why. Show you why. This is such an issue. It says, God is a spirit. Think about that. God is a spirit. So if you read the book and you reading it carnally, you got a problem. You read the book on anything other than spiritually, then you got a problem. It says God is a spirit. So it says, including they that worship him must is commanded. You got to worship him in spirit and in truth. Period. Full stop. But no, I can't do that. I can't do it. I got to I got to do it another way. I got to do this a whole another way. This is this is this is why I, I keep saying this. I keep saying it. a lot of us. We deserve to go to hell. We deserve clearly to go to hell and we should. He tells you even here and out of a mouth of another prophet, it says, I will open my mouth in a parable and I will utter dark sayings of old. And people said, no, we can read this carnally. We can get this understanding carnally. We can do this carnally. We can do this this way and get it this way. Boy. <laughs> Boy. Why do you think the only thing that happened in this book, hell enlarged herself? Why? So a whole bunch more of us can go there. 
It says in verse 13 in, in Isaiah, it says, Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their hearts from me, for their fear towards me is taught by the precepts of men. By the precepts of men. That was. <laughs> let me let me calm down some. I need to calm. Some of us we we just deserve to go to hell. We shouldn't say anything. Just go. Just 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 say. Won't tell you what, which way is hell? Because I can get there a lot faster. Just go to hell. The reason why, because a lot of us, see, you got people even over here, they sit there acting like they're chasing God and they're chasing Satan. And squamping down, they're chasing God. Let's look at this. It says, therefore, remember, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder for the wisdom of their wise men shall perish and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Scripture, right up front, scripture, right in front of you. So we didn't have a problem and we didn't came to this issue. We didn't came to this to where it had to come to a head. It had to come to a head. But why? I'm going to show you why, but it had to come to a head. See, because as we go through here, you see people want to sit there and they love false doctrine. They can care less where it comes from. As long as it sounds good to them or they in cahoots with that person and not holding on to truth and truth is your friend, you should go to hell. You should bust it wide open. Because he done told you. As, as, as my cousin, he done took and told you. But a lot of us don't want to believe the truth. A lot of us don't want to hold on to it. Let's look at something. And you got to go right to where it is. In Revelation chapter, chapter 3, but we're going to pick it up at verse 14. Because this is all this was to get here. To understand we done went through all these places and now we done came here. Out of all these places we done went through, out of all these different cities, and all these places we done came through, now we're here we here and everything is right in front of us and we done looked at some of the bad things that happened there and now we're here and it says in the angel and unto the angel unto the messenger of the church unto this body of the lucidians now do you understand these people who have their own rules is ruled by the people is ruled by these citizens is ruled by these people who have their own beliefs, who want to hold on to their own little doctrines, who want to hold on to their own theologies. This is what this is talking about. And it's a lot of them here. It's a lot of them here. They don't know how to remove what they, what they flesh. They want to stay click to flesh. And they should bust hell wide open. They sit there and say, oh, no, he don't see me. Oh, he don't. Oh, I see. I can look right through you. Don't think I don't see you. I see you. It's telling you right up front. It says, these things saith, amen. The faithful and the true witness in the beginning of creation of God. But it gets better. Is going to tell you something that we need to see and we need to understand clearly. Clearly. Let's look at something. I want, I, want to, I want to pull something else in here. I want to put something else in here. Let's look at Sirach in chapter 24. Sirach 24, verse 8 and 9. And it's telling us something right here. And it's right up front. It says, So the creator of all things gave me an instruction. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. And it's telling, and he made me cause 
my tabernacle to rest and said, let thy dwellings be in Jacob and thy inheritance in Israel. And he created me from the beginning before the world and I shall never fail. Meaning the spirit of God ain't never going to fail. Ain't never going to fail. The spirit of God don't fail. It's impossible. It's an impossibility. And he then divided all this right here. So when he's telling you, he have to write these things, as he said, he said to the Lucidians, write. So he got to express these documents and then he's telling you, amen. So it got to be true. But it gets better. It gets better. Actually, I'm just going to show you some stuff to where we can actually really just understand what's going on here. We just want to really understand what's going on right here. Let's look at this in chapter 44 and same thing. So we're going to look at verse 23. Why we want to look at verse 23? Because I want you to understand where he's coming from. And he's telling you this up front. It says, I made it rest upon the head of Jacob. Be acknowledged him in his blessing. And he gave him an heritage and divided his portion. Jacob divided his portion among the 12 tribes, his 12 sons who want to hold on to it and they're going to follow him spiritually. He gave it to them and he, it, it, this way he did, he parted them. This is the way he parted that stuff. This is where it happened. So the same thing is people think people are going to be ruling over people. Stupidest thing, stupidest thing in the world. And same thing like, actually, we're going to tell you what, let's go over here to Gideon. Let's go to Gideon. Because you know, Gideon said something. I just, just thought about it. Just thought about it. But let's see something what Gideon said. I want to show you something that Gideon said out of his own mouth. Because Gideon made this clear. So I need, I know it's 23, 23, 23. I know it's 20 to 24. 23 or 24. I know it's one of them. Anyway, let's get to it. Let's get to it. Yep, right here. So we're going to look at Judges. Chapter eight, verse 23, Gideon said, well, let's go up one. Let's go up one. <laughs> let's go up one. Let's get the whole thing. And it says, then the men of Israel said unto Gideon, he said to Gideon, rule over us, both thou and thy son and thy son's sons also, for thou hast delivered us from the hands of the Midians. Y'all got to be boo-boo. Because he said, and Gideon said unto them, I will not rule over you, neither shall my son rule over you. The spirit of God shall rule over you. But the main thing is, people be taught this stuff by the precepts of men. Well, I'm your shepherd. I'm this, I'm that. The stupidest thing in the world. Stupidest stuff you ever want to get into. And he's telling us right here, Let's, let's go down a little bit. Let's go down a little bit. It says, he's telling you right up front. He said, I know thy works and thou art neither cold nor hot. We already went through this. You ain't neither cold or hot. I would thou were cold or hot. You should have been one or the other. You got, you know how to be people play this game. People walk around acting like they holy fire. You understand? Go on Facebook. Always got something to say. Always got something to post. Always got something on something. You ain't neither cold nor hot. Playing a game. This ain't no game. Let me show you something. Let me let me let me let me let me pull this a little bit closer before we can see it. In in Ephesians. In Ephesians, it says this. Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to look at something. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 5 and 6. 5 and 6. <clears throat> it says this. It says, Servants, be obedient to them that are, are your masters according to the flesh. People say, oh, I, I, yeah, you got, you got dumb Christians. Use this to where you're going to be obedient to them. That's, that's stupidity. Because he's telling you right up front what you are. These masters are teachers. According to the flesh, the same as the, all they're doing is to teach you. That's it. Be obedient to the, learn from them. Learn something according to the flesh. 
with fear, with desire and trembling. And then they talk about with this trembling. So with the desire and reverence of that, because they're teaching you the word of God. But he's telling you more so. He says, in singleness of heart, as compared as unto Christ, because Christ's going to teach you all things. Verse 6, it says, not with eye service, not with eye service, comparing man pleasers, but servants of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart. Not sitting there, oh, let me post this on there. Let me post this on there. Let me post, let me show them how holy I am over here. Let me post this. Let me tell you what, let me tell them about this about God, because I got this. Let me show them this. You know how crazy that is? Every time we turn around, we got to post, I got to post this. I got to post that. This is man service. This is man service. Oh, we got this down. We got that down. Uh, let me put a minute. John 3, 16. Yeah, this says, this says, really? Oh, you got, go on Facebook. Go on, go on, um, what's that other one? I know that, uh, Instagram. You, it's all over the place. Everybody, they want to look holy. They want to look holy, men pleasers. He even hate to bring it, but I had to bring him up. Same thing I, I did, did with Brother Q. He taking care of stuff, but same thing I told him. I, I told him, I'm, I'm, well, you know how I talk about it. But the main thing is, I say, hey, bro, bro, tell you what you do. Your, 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 your learning is superior to a lot of other people. Superior to other people. Don't go out there fighting with no, you ain't got nothing to prove to nobody but to God. But he get it now. <clears throat> So he said, he, he, he tell me, he, I get it now. I get it now. Yeah. <clears throat> but the main thing is, why you, you ain't got to go post nothing? Oh, they come up on you? Oh, they're going to find out who you are. They're going to find out exactly who you are. Because the first thing they do, as soon as you open up your mouth, they're going to sit there like, I, I think I, I parked up the wrong tree. Yeah. They gonna know they barked up the wrong tree. So this is why I sit there and say, you ain't gotta post nothing. You ain't gotta go around and do nothing. They'll know that no, 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 no. Don't go mess with him. He gonna cut you. <laughs> he gonna he, anyone, he'll cut you. So when we see these things, we gotta understand it. He says, I know that works. And thou neither cold nor hot. Now, he didn't do a lot of posting that kind of stuff, but he, he'd sit there and mix with a whole bunch of mingled fools, I call. And I told him, no, I don't do that. So the same thing is, but you got people out there, they, they, they sit there, they neither hot nor cold. But this, it's telling you why he's, why he's even saying this and why he holds to this. And people got to understand why he does this. So we look at verse 16. It says, so then because thou art in your perfection and beauty, lukewarm. In your perfection and beauty, you're lukewarm. You're neither hot nor cold. I'll spew you out of my mouth. I'll spew your butt out. You ain't got to sit there and be posting stuff every time I turn around. Learn. Understand the scriptures. But he says this even more, verse 17. It says, because thou says, I am rich and increased with goods and have no need, have need of nothing. I have need of nothing. And nor thou art wrenched. In your perfection, beauty, wrenched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. You see how he's doing this? You see how he's just going now? See, this ain't pretty. Like I told you what's going to happen. Verse 18, it gets even better. It gets even better right here. He says, I counsel thee to buy 
of me, gold tried in the fire. Exactly the point. And thou may have be rich yet with that knowledge in thy white raiment and thou may have be clothed, not sitting there, sitting out there with them boys, with, 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 the, with the army of Israel in, in your Armani suits. Not out there like that. It says, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thy eyes, thy eyes, thy understanding with eye slaves. With understanding spiritually that thou may have seen. Because you only can see this spiritually. You can't see it carnally. People are like, you can see it carnally. You can see. Yeah, you go somewhere else. You got to have see this with isolate, with understanding spiritually. So what's going to happen here? You got a lot going to happen here. You got a lot going to happen here. Let's look at it. Verse 19, he says, comparing many as I love, comparing many that I love, I rebuke and chasten. And you see, Paul talked about that. Paul brought that up in Hebrews. He said the same identical thing in Hebrew. We're going to see this in, in uh, Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to pick it up at verse four. And he's telling you the same thing. And we got to see what's going on. It says, Ye have not yet rested, uh, resisted the lifestyle fighting against sin. But watch what he says here. We ain't, cause we ain't, we ain't stopped it. But watch what he says here. It says, for ye have forgotten the exhortation. We have forgotten the exhortation, the urgent warning, the appeal, the instructions that was given from God. We didn't put all that stuff aside and we didn't took up the, the learnings and the, 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 all the men precepts of men. It says, and we have forgotten those exhortations which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son despise not thou chastening. So he gonna whoop our butt. And the Lord is nor, nor faint when thou art rebuked. When your own perfection, your own beauty, you rebuked of him. When you rebuked of him. But he got better. Oh, he got some more here. It says, for who the Lord loveth, he chastened. For who he loved, he chastened. And scourge every one every son whom he receiveth. That's clear. That's clear. And, and now he says this, and this is what made me, what, what one of them made me feel good. And it says, if you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. And for what son is he whom the father chasing not? Cause you got a problem. If he ain't chastening you, you got a problem. And the same thing is right here. However, if ye be without chastement, where ye are partakers, then ye are ye bastards. You are straight out bona fide bastard and not sons. And that's why he says, be zealous therefore and repent. Be devoted with this fervent desire and repent. This is what you got to remember because he says one thing. He said, and when I chasten you, I'm a chasing you with men. He says the same things it's in second Solomon chapter, uh, chapter seven, verse 14. He says the same thing. He says the same thing. He ain't changed nothing. So you thinking it's coming out of heaven. Looking, you looking up in the sky. It ain't in the sky. He says, I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commit acts of sin, I will chasten him with the rods of men and with the stripes of, of, of children of men. He going to do it through people. He been saying this the entire time. He going to deal with you. And if he ain't dealing with you this way, then you ain't his. You can, you can cross that out your head. So we got to remember how this all works. So the main part is this. We want to make sure we understand exactly what God is saying. We want to understand exactly what he's saying and how we can apply this to our lives. How we can apply this to our lives because we don't went through every city. Now, some of us don't went through every city and didn't understand none of this, this entire time. But it's telling you right here. It says, remember, I stand at the door, including 
knock. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and suit with him and he with me. He's telling you this right up front. And the reason he's saying this, so if you hear his voice, that's what he's talking about. You hear his voice, meaning you hear you 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 see the signs from heaven. He's going to reopen up that door. He's going to reveal that door. That door is the gate, and he will sup with you. That sup is to eat and drink with you. That's what he's going to do. But you'll go anywhere else. They're going to tell you all kind of other crazy stuff. But that's all he's telling you. Plain, simple, straight to the point. And he tells you this. It says to him. To him. I don't know why I don't want to do that now. He says, to him that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me in my throne. That's it. With him that overcometh, him he's going to grant to sit in his throne. Don't you know most of it didn't even make it through all the cities? Even as I also overcame and sat down with my father, my creator, in his throne. So it's telling you this and it's making sure it's clear. He that have an ear, let him hear. What the spirit saith unto the bodies. So we got to understand what's going on. And if you don't hear God the way you need to hear God, You're not part of God's. See, same as people was deceived even this past week. People will sit there and like, oh, okay, they got by me. No, no, he ain't dealing with you on that level, especially if you've been here for a while. He ain't dealing with you on that level. This is why I say, don't let these things happen to you and let these games happen. But people will sit there and say, oh, yeah, this, this one got me. No, no, no. You're showing who you really are. This is why I'm very upfront about what I do and what I teach. So we got to remember these seven churches. You go back and you look at them. You study them. You meditate on them. Don't sit there. I'm going to go get some precepts. See, you're just going to get precepts and you still don't have the under understanding from the language that I've been speaking to you. You, you ain't got Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Now I'm going to be opening up Zoom. I'm going to be going to Zoom for a couple of reasons, but I'll be going to Zoom. You'll see the link down in the bottom. Right below the, the what, what I explained what I was going to be teaching. You'll see you got a join Zoom meeting. But same as I said, we got this uh, one teaching that will be today at 3 o'clock. Pacific time, 5 o'clock Central time, 6 o'clock Eastern time. We have that going. And we just want to make sure that we understand what's all going on. Same thing, like I said, next week, some of y'all might not be able to stomach that one because I'm going to tell you, this one might hurt a whole lot of feelings. If you want to know how to get to the kingdom and you got to endure to the end, that's going to be between you and God. But Shiloh, is who right it is. It's Shiloh who's right it is. So if you don't understand principles, if you don't understand doctrine and language, I'm going to tell you right now, you need to start paying close attention to what goes out of King James Bible University. For you to understand what is in this Bible. That's why you don't see us over here. We don't solicit you for money. We, we work for the most high. We're not here to play games with anyone. So with that, the same as I said, we got this, uh, we got this other one here. We, we're going to be in San Antonio coming up and we'll be doing, we'll be going there. Same as we do our morning prayers every morning at 6 a.m. And um, you're more than welcome to join us over here. We do them every morning. If you have a prayer request, go out. Please make sure you put it into the baptism at KJBU. You put them in the chat, I got. I can guarantee you 100% it will not be, be, be part of the prayer. You have to follow what the directions are. Send it to baptism 
at kjbu.org and you do your prayer request there. We'd be more than happy to do it, especially if you're part of the KJBU family and we know who you are. It's no problem. We make sure we do it. If you have any other questions, please make sure that you click on the link that's down below where you see for the Zoom and we will be more than happy to where we answer any questions for you as we move forward. So with that, um, we shouldn't be too many people in there. So if, cause if so, I move, I could have changed it, but we'll know from, from in a little while if we need to switch it over. But other than that, I say, um, until this afternoon to everyone, hopefully you guys go back, please make sure you check it. Cause if you're sitting there, people want to play these games. I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm being, I don't know how much more straighter I can be with you. People who sit there and want to play this game, thinking that they truly going to be holding on to what's going on. I promise you, you're going to end up missing the kingdom based on what you're doing. So with that, I say to each and every person, until this evening, I say to you guys, Shalom. Thank you.